everyone. Welcome to today's ECAC Hockey Women's Preseason Media Poll as we approach the start of our season with two games on Saturday, two games on Sunday to get us started in the exhibition run. And it'll be a quick sprint to the end, as we all know, once we get going. So we're going to start today by announcing our preseason media poll, excuse me, preseason coaches poll, as well as our preseason all-league roster and the poll, which has been released on the web and on social media, is as follows. Colgate selected first with six first-place votes, 115 points. Yale with three, sec or three first-place votes and 98 points in second. Princeton third with one vote for first place and 97 points. Quinnipiac with 92 points in fourth place. Clarkson with 86 points in fifth place with one first-place vote. Cornell, sixth with 73 points. Harvard, seventh with 67 points. St. Lawrence with 60 points. Brown, ninth with 33 points. RPI, 10th with 30 points. Dartmouth, 11th with 27. And Union, 12th with 14. And the preseason all-league roster, forwards from Colgate, senior Danielle Serdachny, Colgate, junior Kalti Kaltenkova, and Yale, junior L. Hart, defenseman, Senior from Yale, Emma Seitz, and sophomore from Cornell, Rory Gilday. And then a unanimous selection at goaltender from St. Lawrence, senior Lucy Morgan. So those are preseason poll and the all-league team. And those will be released or have been released on ECACHockey.com. And we'll have some content going out over the course of the next few days on social media as well. And with that, we will bring on Coach Katie Stone from Harvard. Coach, thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me, Nick. So obviously this league is, for lack of better terms, stacked. <laughs> and I, I think, in my opinion, it, it's probably the only league in the country in a lot of sports where you can be ranked inside the national top 12 and be picked seventh in the preseason poll. So how much you know stock do you put into those numbers to begin the year? And on the second note, can you speak a little bit to the depth of the league and how you use that to kind of push your group? Sure. Well, I, I definitely agree with you that our league is stacked and it's exactly how it should be. Uh, we, we, everyone in our league, players, coaches, administrators, believe we have the strongest league in college hockey, the deepest league in college hockey. And so, you know, what that, what that translates to are some incredible games on the weekends and preparation for the national tournament. And, the, and, and I think you've seen the, you know, at the end of at, at the end of these seasons, we've got some some terrific teams vying for a national title. So, all that is awesome, and the players in our our uh, programs are fantastic. They not only excel on the ice, but they excel in the excel in the classroom, which is a huge piece of it. So, um, you know, to be, I mean, I, I don't put a lot of stock in the polls, quite frankly, because I think everybody's good, and if you're not ready, you're going to get stung any given day. So. Um, is it motivation for all athletes? No question. They're looking at that stuff more than coaches are probably and trying to size up where they are. They know more players on teams than coaches do, other teams and coaches do. And so, um, but you know, it just, it's a, it's a starting point. I mean, at the end of the day, it's not where you start, it's where you finish in these uh, hockey seasons. So we're just looking forward to it. Any questions out there before I give coach a couple more? Perfect. Just us. <laughs> and Nicole, if you if you want to jump in at any point, just let me know. Um, so, yeah, I mean, talking about the depth and, and now moving on to your roster and <laughs> give us a little bit of a synopsis as we go forward on what you bring back, who's coming in and that incoming group. There were a lot of players across the board in our league in the international scene over the summer. You know, how much experience are you bringing in and, and what does that look like? Sure. So, you know, I, I, I mean, everybody knows we had a, a a really um, deep senior class last year, which drove the bus for us. And, um, and so now we're in, and we're in a position where we've got tremendous opportunity for our young kids. And a lot of our kids that are real good players coming in, didn't see as much time last year because we were so deep uh, in other positions. And so with our older kids, so they're excited. Um, and I think, you know, Della Revere obviously stands out for everyone, but Ann Bloomer and Kira Willoughby should be right there as well. And, you know, I look for kids like uh, Shannon Hollins to make a big step, Mia Biotti, Jen, uh, Jenna McDonald, 
and Alex Polici in the net for us. So, um, you know, and again, I, I, I love to be surprised. I, I, that's, those kids sort of have had a little bit more experience than the others, but um, I, I can't wait to see who's going to emerge as, as a, an impact player for us this season. Great. And Nicole, you had a question? Sorry. Good morning. Um, Katie, I just wanted to ask a little bit more about net, um, you, uh, uh, goalie. You did just say that Alex is, is planning to be the starter, but um, obviously just not a lot of experience in that, which is going to be, I think, a, a nationwide issue for a lot of, of teams. So just wanted to ask a little bit about sort of the plan and, and how you're feeling about that. I'm feeling great about it. I mean, the times when Alex played last year, she did a fantastic job. She's technically really sound. She's calm in the net. Uh, so I, I mean, I'm just excited. She's going to have the opportunity to be in that role more consistently, uh, because I think she's going to thrive. Nicole, do you have anything else? Um, and then Kate just wanted to talk a little bit about, uh, her size. Just, um, she's another goalie for you that just really brings, um, is, is just, a huge presence in that and um, what that means uh, sort of for your defense and, and being able to build out from the back. Yeah, I mean, that's where it's going to start for us. We've got to play great defense this year. And, you know, Alex is, as I mentioned, is a really calm presence back there and, and a really good communicator. So, and obviously her size is what, you know, that's, that's an asset. Um, and, but I think the thing we've, you know, we've have a lot, we've had size before um, that has been fantastic for us. You also have to make sure you've got the technical component to that. And, you know, she lines up really well for with the puck. She is very sticky. She doesn't give up a lot. So, uh, but the other piece of it is the synergy between the D and the goaltenders. And she's definitely got that. Thank you. You're welcome. That's great. Coach, if you have anything else to add, feel free. If not, I think we are. We're all set for you to carry on with the rest of your day. Great. Well, I just want to wish everyone luck because obviously we're excited about this year. And as you mentioned right off the bat, Nick, we've got some some great, great programs in our league, great coaches, great players, and just want to wish everyone the best for uh, a successful and healthy season. Thanks a lot, Coach. Good luck to you as well. Thank you. All right, Coach, you can uh, you can hit the uh, unmute button. I just had everyone muted when when Katie was on. Sure. All right, joined now by Coach Chris Wells, St. Lawrence. Coach, we just talked with Coach Stone about just the depth of this league, and and again, it's one of those where you can look at it and say, you know, being picked eighth in a league is not something that you would want in a lot of places, but in this league, it's, you know, anybody's game from one to really all the way down. What does that depth in the league do to push your team and the competitiveness that, that you need to bring every game? Well, we certainly experienced it last year. Um, you know, we came in seventh last year and took Yale to, to three games in a, in a really tight playoff series, three, two with a real good chance towards the end of the game with a goalie out to tie it. Um, but you know, I think for a lot of coaches, uh, this has been coming for a couple of years now, just in the recruiting trail and where uh, kids are choosing to come and they're choosing to come to the ECAC. The, the league is getting some of the best players available. And now uh, college hockey is going to see exactly how things have, have played out and seeing teams as strong as they are in five through eight in our league is, is pretty incredible. And, you know, as you build a team, you talk about recruiting and talk about that experience. It, it always starts in the net and you happen to be in a really good spot with that position. Lucy Morgan had an impressive year last year, was voted unanimously to the preseason all league team this year. How important of a piece is she to your roster as you continue to climb through this conference? <laughs> yeah. Uh, Understatement, yeah. I know. Yeah, I'm not sure if important call, you know categorizes that yeah, I think everybody's pretty familiar with Lucy and what she's been able to do and um, what everybody loves about Lucy 
uh, the most is she's always trying to get better. She's always trying to improve her game. So everybody's looking to see what she can do. She's such a competitor. She stops pucks. And, uh, you know, that that gives us a chance to do what we can do. It can give younger kids a chance to improve and not be it not have their mistakes magnified and uh, it can allow our better players to turn you know saves into goals at the other end so uh, it, you know what she does is uh, certainly the driving force as to where we're going to be going this year great any questions from anyone else all right i'll continue Coach, besides Lucy Morgan, if you could just give us a little bit of a breakdown on your returners, you know, the group you have coming back with experience from last year, and then also uh, your incoming group and, and what you're adding to the mix as you go into this season. Sure, Nick. Thanks. <clears throat> um, you know, we were fortunate to, to have three people uh, be associated that uh, were already enrolled in school to, to be at the Olympics last year. Uh, we had two play for Team China, Anna Segetti who's been our leading scorer the last, uh, her first two years at St. Lawrence. And then we also had Taylor Lum, who was a freshman. Um, they both played for Team China. Uh, Julia Gosling uh, was centralized with Hockey Canada, uh, served as an alternate over uh, in, in Beijing. Uh, all three of those players weren't with us last year and, uh, you know, are back. So obviously that's going to give us a boost. Um, to to our offense uh, we hope um and and i think some of the things that you're going to see from our team this year because those three players weren't here we had a group of younger players freshmen sophomore uh and even some juniors that were able to play you know quality high level minutes that uh wouldn't have been able they, they wouldn't have been able to do that with um taylor anna and and julia here so their improvement uh, was probably a little bit quicker than what the normal collegiate process is. So, uh, you know, we feel like we have, you know, some decent depth. Um, and uh, I think they'll add a big add a big boost. I mean, we'll find out. We, we got Colgate on Sunday. So, you know, no rest for the wicked here. We're just uh, going to jump right in. So any of the freshmen that uh, are getting excited about college hockey, they're going to, you know, face it head on without a windshield. Anyone else have questions? Nicole, I don't know if that's from before with your the hand raised or not. I'm going to lower it just so that you can continue to use that feature. Yeah, sorry, that was from before. Sorry, just getting caught up still this morning. Um, okay. Chris, can you just um, talk a little bit about um, sort of what you what you expect from um, from your offense in terms of like who you who you see as the standouts and who other than you know the, the names we kind of know who you see isn't maybe an emerging star that we should be keeping an eye on um I, i'm sorry you're looking for some auxiliary scoring is that what the question was yeah if you yeah. um you know sort of the names that we know but who are the who are the players that you're expecting to maybe take an extra step this year or or um become a, the names that we're talking about you know next year sort of thing who's the who yeah. are the emerging stars yeah, thanks. Sorry. Um, I, I, I think, you, you know, as I was talking, you know, those the, the younger players that were able to just play fabulous minutes last year, play against everybody's top line and uh, improved. And, and I think, you know, they've come back with a, a certain confidence level that, you know, they probably wouldn't have if, if it was different. But, you know, the, the, our top line last year had Allie McLeod and, and Abby Hustler. They were both sophomores uh, and freshmen, respectively, last year. So I think we can rely on them to be able to, you know, produce a, at a, a very good level. They did last year and, and feel like they can uh, again this year. And, uh, you know, our D have been able to uh, contribute and, uh, you know, felt like our power play was – you know, pretty good and uh, just feel like we got a nice, well-balanced team. And, you know, as we kind of grow here uh, at the beginning of the season, you know, the hopes that uh, Lucy can keep us in some games to get some confidence and, you know, start to hit our stride uh, the second second semester once, you know, the, the, the group gets used to being around each other. Even though we have, you know, five incoming freshmen, you know, the, the three players from – last year that uh, were centralized you know that's eight different eight new players uh, 
you know, on a roster in the low twenties, you know, that's a 30 year team that has, has some turnover. So um, just getting used to being around each other is, uh, is going to be different. It's kind of, it's kind of like we got three kids in, in college and, you know, my wife and I are having a great time by ourselves, but when the three kids come home, it takes a little while to get used to <laughs> having everybody around the house again. Thank you. <laughs> Great, Coach, unless you have anything to add, I think that's all we need from you today. I appreciate you taking some time to step on today. Yep. Thank you. Thank you. All right. We love when coaches are on time. We love even more when they're early. And we're going to continue to roll right ahead. Uh, stepping in for Princeton assistant coach Courtney Kessel. Coach, thank you for joining. I believe you're muted. There you go. Now we're on. Thank you for hey, stepping you? on today, and we're looking forward to getting this season started. And your team is is another team that's right in the mix with the preseason poll coming out and the national poll coming out. And we talked with Coach Stone earlier about you know looking at that preseason poll and being a team that's you know third in the poll in your case, but then you look at the national poll and inside the top twelve, it's the depth of this league is really something that you know I think it can be envied around the country. What does it mean to be, you know, coaching in a league with so much depth and how does your team get motivated by such great competition? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's always nice to be uh, ranked hanging into the season. And I mean, obviously the numbers don't mean anything if you, you don't put the product on the ice, but the ECAC is such a strong league. I mean, we saw that last year and we're seeing it again this year and um, it's great. You know, every game you're heading into a battle and there's no time to sit back and Get, get into bad habits or anything like that. So it's great. Great. And moving into, you know, looking at the preseason poll and, and coming into last year, I know, you know, really successful year, maybe not, you know, the year towards the end of the season and the postseason that you guys had wanted at the end, but the experience that you were able to get with such tough competition in the league, how has that pushed forward into the off season and the training that's gone into it and then heading into this year? Yeah, I mean, last year, obviously, we didn't uh, attain our goals, but I think it was a great opportunity for some of our young athletes to step into some big roles that maybe they wouldn't have the opportunity to to do so if, you know, we had a bigger roster. So it was great to see them excel in those areas. And, um, you know, down the stretch, we really pushed, um, you know, beating Harvard there uh, in the ECAC quarterfinals was was great. And then I think, you know, obviously losing that game versus Yale was tough, but it, it sets us up for, like you said, you know, the postseason heading into the summer and and working really hard and, you know, setting those goals again coming into this season. We know it's going to be a tough year. Like you mentioned, the ECAC always has a great battle and um, we're, we're ready. We're excited. We're thrilled to go. And as we talk about your incoming group and returners, obviously there was a lot of hype built over the summer with Sarah Fillier um, and that international experience and just really dominating at the world stage um, to have specifically to have a player like her. And I know as coaches, you don't like to single people out, but with the media and, and the questions that we will get, I want to make sure we hit that. How important is it to have a player of her caliber that has that experience now on an international level coming into your roster again for this year? Yeah, I mean, it's incredible to have her back. We're we're super excited to have her back in our lineup. Um, I think the experiences that she went through, you know, heading into the Olympics, trying out and then heading into the World Championship, those things, you know, sh they're just they're invaluable growing as a human, growing as a leader. And I think we're really going to see that and and use that this year, obviously heading into some of our big games. Um, she knows what it's like to play under pressure and uh, we're, you know, we're, we're hoping for big things for her, but she's also surrounded by some great players and, you know, not only one player can do it by themselves. So we're, we're looking forward to adding her to our roster, but we definitely have some great support players around her. And tell us a little more about those support players, some of the returners that you have coming back. And then also if you could dovetail into the incoming group that you have coming in. Yeah, we have a great leadership group. Um, our seniors, you know, uh, Kayla Fillier, Mariah Keppel, uh, Maggie Connors, Chloe Harvey, and so Van Nunzert. And I think having that strong leadership group, you know, we had that year off with COVID. And so they're they're an, another year older. And so that leadership is tremendous to helping our incoming freshmen. Um, you know, they're they're great as well. We're, we're really looking forward to seeing them score some big goals for us this year. Um, and again, in net, we they're going to battle it out. There's three of them that are going to fight for that spot. But um, we're really looking forward to it. 
Great. Nicole, did you have anything? Yes, hi, sorry. Um, I was just um curious about sort of the you you guys always the IVs always have the the difficulty of sort of having to, to catch up there when everyone's got that little bit of extra time to to get moving. So just curious about there's the bonus of this being as regular a season as you had in a while. Um, but obviously it's going it's going to be difficult to to sort of catch up there in the beginning. So just how you guys sort of prepare for that and make sure that you're ready there first first puck drop. Yeah, absolutely. We have a little bit longer of a preseason, but, you know, we kind of use it to our advantage. It's a great time to get everyone on the same page. You know, we get our, our fitness testing in, we get our feet wet on the ice, we do some on ice testing. Um, but I think just preparing the, the incoming class and just reminding the returners of, you know, what it's like to put the jersey on and what our expectations are and what we value and what we really strive for and, and set our goals. And so we really use that time to come together as a team and be prepared, the most prepared we can be when we step on that ice first Colgate in our opening game. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, you're you're muted. Making sure I wasn't interrupting. Uh, I think that's all we have for you. And thank you for jumping on today and giving us a little bit of an insight on what that program is going to look like moving forward. We look forward to seeing you on the ice and good luck for the rest of this year. Thank you so much. Thank you. Doug, how are you? Good morning. Good. How are you? Great. So we're going to get things started. We just put out our preseason poll for the year and taking a look at how everything breaks down with with the ECAC these days it's you look at the preseason poll and you can be sixth as your team is and then you're still in the top 12 of the national poll so the depth of our league has really come through in these preseason numbers and as much as coaches don't really like to look at the numbers you know what does some of that mean towards how competitive this league is going to be again this year yeah hi everybody um really exciting uh for our league to have that many teams that were ranked in the the national polls this year um it's just a testament to the strength of our league as a whole uh to have 12 teams that are all competitive now uh, is amazing you know i've been coaching now 16 years in this league and this is definitely the most competitive it has ever been um and uh, it's going to be really exciting because no matter which team you are and, and where you are in these rankings if your team doesn't show up one night, you're going to lose in this league. And, and that makes every game exciting and competitive. And it's great for the fans and, and great for hockey as a whole. And as you get into the season and you start, you know, building from the, the off season training, what is the group that you have coming back as returners looking like and the experience you have? And then if you can tell us a little bit about your incoming group as well. Yeah, we're really excited about uh, our incoming group, but uh, have a great uh, returning group as well. I mean, I think if you just sort of look at the the top end of things, we had uh, Gillis Frechette and Izzy Daniel and Lily Delianidis as a line last year, um, all top scorers in the league, uh, one of the most dynamic lines in the country. Uh, Gillis was at the USA National Camp this summer, and I think learned quite a bit from that experience. Um, so that'll be a um, a real tough line for opponents and a real strong line for us coming back. Um, then we've added some nice uh, forwards to complement them as well. Uh, on the back end, of course, you have Rory Gilday just coming off the World Championships with Team USA. is going to be a real force for us on the back end. And Ashley Messier, who was just at Canadian National Team Camp as well this summer. So um, certainly two strong returners there. Um, and a number of uh, strong defensemen coming in. So, uh, and then on the back, the back end of things, in the goalie position for us, uh, with Lindsey Browning graduating, uh, we've got three goalies that we think are all capable, and it's going to be a real healthy competition here between those three to see uh, who rises to the top. But uh, we're real confident in, in all of their abilities, so it should be interesting. Great, and you talked about Rory Gilday, and if you could. Just talk a little bit, elaborate a little more on on that international experience. She was selected today to the preseason all league team by the league's coaches, and you know, being an underclassman in her case, but having a lot more experience than some other underclassmen around the country. How important is that international edge that a lot of these ECAC players are getting? 
Yeah, just a it's such a great experience for any player to go up to the national team level. You just see um, the skill, their their passion, their drive, their commitment. Um, it's a whole other world. And so, you know, you, for a young player like her, you you grew up in in Minnesota where it is competitive and there's great hockey programs. But then it's another level getting to the NCAA and and experiencing that and understanding you know what it takes at our level and then there's the national team level and and what it takes at that level and to see um and for her to experience that and, and gain confidence that she can play at that level and and um and also to learn from those players and those coaches and to come back and bring that back to our program is is, is huge um and i think she's just really excited about getting back here but also really excited about her future and uh it's just going to be great for our team as a whole Great, thank you. And Nicole, do you have anything? Yeah, hi, Doug. Um, hi. I I think you've got probably one of the most or maybe the most interesting incoming classes um, and, and probably the highest ceiling. It seems like maybe people are, are underestimating you guys a little bit and might really be surprised. Can you um, maybe just talk a little bit about, about recruiting and about being able to bring in such a um, experienced and, and interesting incoming class this year um and what that what you think that will mean for your for your program here yeah i, I you know i think it's um you know got a number of players that just played at the u18 uh, worlds uh, both on team canada and uh team usa so you know we just talked about rory gilday's experience uh, on the national team but then you have an incoming class that just gained tremendous valuable experience playing in the world championships at the u18 level and for them to see and understand you know what it takes to play at, at the national level too and, and uh, playing at a high level like that before you actually get to the ncaa is eye-opening and it also helps those players understand what it's going to take uh, at the ncaa level uh, also so it certainly bridges that gap somewhat between playing junior hockey or playing high school hockey and then and then coming to the NCAA. So really excited to um, get this class here and, and have them join an already uh, strong group. So it's obviously an adjustment uh, going from junior and high school hockey to the NCAA and, and there'll be some some growing pains along the way, but um, we feel really strongly about the class as well. And it, and as you said, it's uh, um, lots of different skill sets coming in. So I think that's really going to help us in a number of different areas uh, going into this season. But we know there'll be some some bumps along the road here early on, uh, but we expect them to to make a huge impact on our program here right away. And then, Doug, I just wanted to ask a little bit about or, or on your defense. Like, I, a lot of programs have questions in goal, and and sort of it's a toss up at this point. But um, you guys have such a strong defense that um, not that it renders that moot, but it definitely helps you, gives you a little bit more um, sort of security back there. I just wanted to ask you a little bit more about um, those defenders and, and the security that that gives your team and, and gives your younger goalies uh, while they get a chance to get settled in. Yeah, you know, I think that's huge for any team to have, you know, a strong defensive core, regardless of your goaltending situation. Um, again, it'll be a bit of an adjustment for the freshmen coming to the NCAA. I think that's the toughest position to come in. And, and you know, as a forward, you can come in and sometimes you, you make mistakes and those mistakes get covered up, you know, before they <laughs> end up back in your net. For the defenseman, uh, you're sort of that last line of defense before, um, you know, before you get to the goaltender. So those mistakes uh, are more obvious and more uh, front and center. So, um, you know, I, I think we're really excited about the future of our decor. Uh, I do think it will take, um, you know, a little bit of time here for them to adjust to the game at this level. But certainly we've come to understand just how important it is to have uh, a strong decor to have success. And so we're really excited about this young group and the potential of this young group. But again, uh, it's going to be a, a young group. Thank you. Thank you. Great. Thanks so much, Coach. Unless you have anything else to add, I think we are all good today. And thank you for jumping on. Good luck with this season. 
Thanks, Nick. Thanks, everybody. Appreciate it. All right. And we are moving right along. We have Quinnipiac head coach Cass Turner. Coach, thanks for joining us this morning. Hope everything is going well. It is. How are you doing? Very good. Good. We get a couple people on here. So I'll start with a couple questions. Maybe you're just one question and then see what everyone else has. Obviously, last year, you know, a really strong finish to last season, semifinal appearance and gaining that NCAA tournament win you know, for your program for the first time, what is needed from your group, in your opinion, to take the next step on both the league side and also to reach that frozen four, which I know is that goal? Yeah, I mean, first of all, it's a new year. You know, I think there's no continuation of of success from the previous season. And I think that's important for, for our group to understand that we're going to have to fight as hard or harder than we did last year to even get where we got. And I you look at the ECAC having seven teams ranked in in the poll it's pretty amazing to look at the depth that we have so um I think for us it's it's continuing to build on what has been growing within our program you know we want to play a hard to play against style we want to be defensively tough but we're starting to prove ourselves as as a more um, impactful offensive team so how can we continue to put the puck in the net and have the puck on our stick and and look to win as many games as we can this year. And you spoke briefly about the depth of the league, and I've talked to a few coaches today looking at the preseason poll and seeing your team at four, seeing a team like Cornell or Harvard six and seven, and all those teams inside the top 12 nationally. You really don't, in a lot of sports, in a lot of leagues, you don't see that kind of depth where the sixth and seventh teams in the preseason poll are top 10 in the country. How, as someone who's been in the league for a long time now, you know, seeing that built from the ground up, really, in this side of the league, how awesome is it to see that, first of all? And how much can you speak to the depth and the competitive nature that this league brings night in and night out? It, it's fantastic to see. You know, you look at the ECAC, and this is a league that combines academics and athletics in a different way than any other league in, in the country. And to see these high performing students performing so well as athletes and and to find ourselves last year with five teams in the NCAA tournament and and all five competing hard and then to have a team in the frozen four and and I think that you look at the success and and what we're having this type of depth in our league means that whoever in our league goes on to play in the NCAA tournament they're going to be battle tested and prepared with the nature of our travel partners it puts you in a position where essentially most weekends you're playing a top 10 team in the country and that's what we found last year you know in the second half of the year every single weekend we had a top 10 opponent and to look at that kind of depth that means that when it comes time for playoffs you're battle tested and that's exactly the experience that our students want and um, that's the type of competitiveness that's going to help us to win national championships in the ECAC. Great any questions from anyone on the call? Nicole, you can go ahead. Heck yes, I just wanted to ask you um, about goaltending. Obviously, you were you, you had sort of a, a world class goaltender that really made a huge impact last year. So, just curious what the the situation is um, for you guys in goal this season. Hi, Nicole. How are you doing? You good. I'm good. Thanks. Good. Um, I, I'm excited. You know, you look at last year, and no doubt. Uh, Kareen Schroeder, I just had a phenomenal season, but quietly beside her, Logan Andrews did too. And she played a lot of big games for us, a lot of important games. You know, she beat Yale, she beat Cornell for nothing. Um, she she had some really important moments and she's a goalie who played at the national level with Team Canada at the under 18 level and, and has a lot of experience and confidence behind her in being in her fifth, fifth year here at Quinnipiac. So we're excited about Logan, but like always, I think we have a really strong goaltending team already. You know, you look at in practice how much they're pushing one another. I think it's outstanding. Katie Boudiette had a phenomenal summer and and is really coming into her own. And if we we backtrack two years ago and, and look at in the COVID year, you know, she didn't allow a goal in any game that she played that year. Um, so I think we have great depth and great opportunity in the goaltending position. Ethan, go ahead. Uh, hey, Cass, um, this summer, you know, you have a new freshman class coming in. 
Uh, you guys ranked high on, on the national rankings. But I'd say the most exciting thing that happened uh, to this program was Dar uh, Danielle Marmer um, getting hired by the Bruins, first woman on an on-ice role. I'm just curious, what, what was that like for you? What's that like for the program? And sort of just can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, um, Danielle is such a bright, ambitious individual. She's been that way the entire time I've known her. So I think we've just been fortunate to be along her path as a player. And now, you know, for her in, in her operations role here and to see her flourish throughout her time at Quinnipiac, she took on a role here that fit exactly her skill set and her strengths. And, you know, to to see others see what that looks like and to, for them to notice just how bright she is and what she's capable of is really exciting. So I know being, you know, the first female in a, in a hockey position with the Bruins is in, it's a big moment. It's really neat. And I'm seeing her confidence just grow and grow. And there's no doubt she's going to do a phenomenal job and that role for her with the Bruins will continue to grow in her time there. Cameron, you can go ahead, and then Nicole, you can go after him. Hi, Cass. You guys have brought in a couple freshmen at every position this year. Can you kind of talk about how they've been faring so far? Yeah, we're, we're excited about our incoming class, um, including Shay Maloney, our, our grad transfer from Brown. So I'll start with her. You know, she... Um, she's had a phenomenal career at Brown and, and you know, she knows how to put the puck into the net. You know, she's strong, she's physical and, and it's exciting to see what she's doing already. She'll play an important role for us, um, right away from the start. We have two incoming first years who played at the Canadian national level, um, with Zoe Ewens at defense and then Madison Chandler up front. And, you know, both of them are, have jumped immediately into this level in practice and and i know we're going to add great depth and and they're going to they're going to impact our lineup um and then as we continue through our class tatum blacker and net you know she is a very different style goalie than than our other goalies she's very athletic and she's in a position she's a little bit smaller but she she is somebody who puts herself in positions to make saves and battles like none other so we're excited to see her continue to grow and um, Sammy Boldy up front and Tiana McIntyre um, in the back. Both of them were incredibly strong players in high school. And, and I think for them, it's going to be exciting to watch them transition into this into this style and into the, the depth in college hockey. And, and I think it'll be fun this weekend for them to get opportunities in our exhibition game against UConn and, and see what they can do. Great. Nicole. Cast the ball that up. I was actually going to ask about your sophomores, which um, last year were really interesting freshmen, really seemed to be hitting their stride late and were sort of the class that I had an eye on um, sort of across the country. So now they have this year of experience and, and that postseason. So what are you expecting from them and how do you see that year of experience impacting their game? You know, it's funny when we start talking about class years because I'm like, with COVID, I keep forgetting who's what <laughs> because people are here for five years. So um, <clears throat> looking at our players who are, we're going into their second year. I, you're you're right. Like you watch through the end of the year, and in particular, Maya Labad, um, she really emerged at the end of the season last year. You know, she was really impactful for us, scoring in the NCAA tournament. But I think looking at what her spring looked like was even more exciting for us. You know, she trained incredibly hard, and her fitness level was one of the top in our in our program. Um, and then to see her be rewarded with an opportunity with Hockey Canada this summer and um, at that development camp, she she played phen a phenomenal style of hockey and and really I think gained a step in her confidence. So to see her now in practice, you know, she really has emerged as one of those those sophomores that I think is going to make a big impact on, on how we play. Great. Thanks, Cass. Yeah, thank you. Go ahead, Ethan. Um, you were named to the Hockey News' list on top 25 women in hockey that could break the NHL's uh, gender barrier. I'm just curious, what does that mean for you? You know, I think it's – it's amazing that we're in a place now where people are having those conversations and recognizing that, you know, we're coaching, we're coaching people, you know, and, and it may be that a woman is equally 
as qualified as as a man to coach in the NHL. And and so I'm excited about the fact that we're there. You know, we're starting to have those conversations. And, you know, people like Danielle Marmer, they're getting their opportunities. Jess Campbell getting her opportunity to coach at the AHL level. And um and I think the more women that are there, the more that people are going to say, you know, there are some incredibly qualified females that could find real success in the NHL. I don't think it's going to be me just so you know, I really like college hockey. This is my path. I love coaching women. Um, and it's no knock against uh, anyone who does want to coach in the NHL. I think for me, you know, I want women to to see female role models and I want them to realize you know what what they can accomplish in this world and and it's incredibly important to me to stay in a position like that cameron go ahead we got time for one more you guys certainly lost a couple of great forwards up front and taylor house and renee saltness but to be returning nine of your top 10 forwards from last season that has to give you a lot of confidence going into the season with that group right it really does you know looking out pr at practice and and seeing the depth through our forward lines, um, it's exciting. But you know, it, every year there's always some new surprises and an opportunity. Like you, we have some players on our team who had phenomenal summers and just trained so hard that I'm I'm really excited to see what they might accomplish this season. You know, and and may not be the names that you that you're you're always thinking of that maybe you saw in our top nine last year. So. Um, that depth is outstanding. You know, Olivia Mobley getting the opportunity to to be at USA Hockey Camp and and getting that exposure. I was actually just talking with her this morning about that experience and and just what she feels she can accomplish um, now in in our league, having had that exposure to that level that level. So it's exciting, you know, to to be able to look forward and say, here's where these players were last year, and and what can they accomplish this season. Great. Thank you, coach, and good awesome. luck this season. Thanks, everyone, for jumping on. Thanks, Nick. Thank you. Bye, guys. Yep. Happens all the time. Thank you for jumping on. How are you doing? Good. Good morning. Good morning. So we'll start off and just talk a little bit about, you know, how last season came to an end and, and really was, was a great part of the year for your team in your first year best record for Brown in five years overall, most ECAC wins since 08, 09 and finishing highest in the standings in a decade. And really a big component of that was going unbeaten seven of your last nine, you know, winning two big games against Quinnipiac and Yale. It seemed like you really came into your own as a group at the end of last year. How has that built for you in the off season? And, and what are you looking for, you know, out of your group as we start the year? Yeah, I mean, I, th I think how we ended um, really has inspired what we did going into the spring and into the summer. Um, we had a tremendous uh, leadership group of eight women um, selected by the team. And so much of what they talked about throughout our meetings all summer was, um, you know, we want to get off to a fast start. I think there's no regret about the start of last year, but they recognized that it took a little bit too long to learn the lessons and to to get everybody up to speed. And so I think there's a lot of motivation there for the women that we just, we get off to a fast start that we're physically ready, uh, we're ready from a conditioning standpoint. We, we remain a very small roster. And so I think conditioning will be a key for us, but um, they're, they're very driven. This is a driven group of women that they want to achieve big things. And you spoke about a few of the players that, you know, in that leadership group, if you, if you have any that stand out to you and want to add a little more on them or, if you also could go into that incoming class that you have coming in, I know it was announced on social media over the last few weeks and talk about that class and what they're going to bring to this program. Yeah, I, I would love to, you know, recognize that leadership group and I don't need to piece out each one of them, but um, I think there's eight women because we have a lot of leadership. Um, you know, it's interesting. We come out of last year where um, I think we only had six women that had ever played D1 hockey. Right. And so, uh, we very quickly turned rookies into veterans last year. And um, I think the reason we had eight people in the leadership group is we had gone through voting for for captain. And there was just such an array of people that, that the team wanted in that leadership role. And so we will select captains eventually this year. But um, that group onboarded that freshman class. They kept the team together all summer in the sense of communicating and group chats and just, you know, FaceTimes and meeting each other. Um, 
a group had met up in Buffalo, um, some people like up to Ontario and just to get together throughout the summer. And I think that speaks a lot to the type of group that we have. I'm just so proud of like how much they like each other. You know, that's a huge thing. Um, so then speaking to the freshmen, that group, there's, there's um, six new players. Um, five are, are freshmen, one's a transfer. Um, but they came in super comfortable because the leaders, you know, welcomed them. It was, it was not like they waited for September to hit and got to meet them. They all knew each other, um, even back in June. And so, um, and we need this freshman group to contribute right away. You know, we need them to be comfortable. We need them to be ready to hit the ground running because we're a small group. Um, and I think it's a really talented young group, um, that's coming in that can make an impact right away. And Coach Turner just spoke a little bit about the depth of the league and how much of a challenge it can be when you are literally playing a top 10 opponent every weekend. For a group like yours that is continuing to build and, and grow into, you know, this league, as you talked about, how much of A, a challenge is it, but also B, an opportunity to be able to take on these teams night in and night out, you know, in your league play? Yeah, there's a consensus here that we've got to be prepared to bear the storm. Right. And um, and then get to our identity as a team as quickly as possible. Um, I, I can't be worried or concerned about competing with what our opponents have or what, you know, what they don't have. Like we just have to be ourselves. And I think that was part of the the, the growth last year is um, the buy in and just being our group and having fun. That's a big part of our identity is, is that joy in playing. Um, the game got harder this year. They've they've altered uh, the definition of, of body contact this year, which probably doesn't serve a small young group very well. But we'll be ready to to get after it there and and to bring a little bit of heat and, and that grit that we're kind of starting to get known for. Nicole, hi Mel. I just wanted to um, sort of expand upon that. Um, with you guys with trying to find some growth and the things that that you help to build on with such a tough league i think like there's a ceiling for for how much you can do each year so how are you sort of keeping the girls motivated and not letting them not letting it feel like maybe backslide or anything like that if it doesn't sort of continue with the same trajectory of growth for you guys i think it you know it'll be a little bit longer uphill battle for you guys so just curious about sort of that discussion of what what wins you are looking for and what growth means even if it's not wins on a score sheet yeah it's a really important question right i think my biggest concern coming out of the end of last season with big wins over nationally ranked opponents is my concern is do, do the women think it's just going to naturally happen like do they think that it just happens um because we left off one spot we're going to pick up um, and so that's something that we're we're not only talking about but working on every day um we have six hours a week of of training together we we do a little bit of skating here and um but we're, we're touching on that identity piece that i talked about earlier um and i think if we can play consistently to our identity that's a win for us now do i want to win hockey games absolutely like all of our women want to win hockey games and be competitive in the league um and i don't think that's you know i, I think there's a chance there we, we want to make a jump right we want to get into the top eight we want to be a playoff team i thought that last year's start um was great for us because we look we look back at that as the returning group and say some of those games we dropped in the first half made the difference we would have been the eighth team in you know i look at the end of the year last year we tie princeton princeton ends up being eight the eight team upsets number one you know a lot of things can happen but you've got to play a long consistent season and for us it's about identity playing to our identity all the time thanks Mel. thanks nicole great any other questions Great. Thank you so much, Coach. And we look forward to seeing your team hit the ice this year. Good luck. Great. Thanks, Nick. Thank you. Josh, how are you? Good morning. How are we doing, Nick? Not too bad. Thanks for thanks for hopping on. Every coach yeah. has been a couple minutes early. It's making my life a lot easier today. <laughs> Everybody's excited to get the year going. I can tell you that. Sure you and me awesome. both. That, yeah. <laughs> Can't wait to actually have games. Yep. So we'll get right into it. And obviously, um, you know, looking at where where things ended for you last year and moving forward, it's you know, continuing each year in the program for you to build and and find that success in what has become the most competitive league in in women's college hockey. 
Um, where is your team headed into this year after the off season? And, you know, what do you like about your group going forward? Well, I think, you know, obviously we, we want to continue to improve. I think last year, you know, averaging about a goal, 1.2 goals a game and, and being shut out, I think 14 times last year, I think certainly we want to continue to improve. We want to grow, we want to get better. And I think one thing that we really emphasized in the spring for our girls was making sure that we're physically more prepared than we were this past season. And I think our group did a fantastic job of putting in the work. Um, they came back, they crushed testing. You can feel a different energy around our group and you can feel you know the kids connecting a lot more and and just a different feeling at, on the ice at practice so far so um i think you know the identity of our team has always been i think a hard-working competitive group but i think it's our challenge that we want to continue to add another layer to that you know and i think for our group it's how can we execute a little bit better how can we continue to find ways to uh, add another element to, to how our team plays so uh, for us i think it's just trying to create that next element you know, executing a little bit better, finding ways to score more goals, continuing to get more consistent play from everyone in our locker room and uh, just working to two. I know it's cliche, but just just improving every day. And I think that's our biggest focus right now. Hey, Josh, uh, it's Ken. Um, your 12th, your pick 12th here in the poll. I mean, is that expected? And how much is that motivation for you guys? Yeah, certainly we'll use it as motivation for our group. I think it's, uh, again, it's still mo more about process for us, for our group. You know, certainly I think that the preseason poll is not a surprise for our group, given where we finished last year. And and it's really up to us to earn uh, a better slot than that, right? We, we have to earn everything and, and um, we understand that. I think for us, it's just focusing on the process of, of how we can capture more key moments and, and win more different situations that will lead to uh, better results and outcomes over the course of the season. You guys got the exhibition game on uh, Saturday. What's the um, what do you expect? What do you want to see out of that game? Well, hopefully, I mean, just having some video on everybody would be fantastic to be able to sit down with players and be able to teach them. Um, and it's been a really short preseason, right? We got on the ice last Wednesday. Um, so you're talking probably seven, eight practices before we play a, a hockey game. So um, from a systematic perspective, from a, a, a just a, a practice perspective, um, obviously we're going to be rusty. It's going to be a great game for us to have our kids competing, uh, just trying some of the things that we've been teaching and, and just have some opportunities to really coach up individuals after the game. So um, we're just looking for everybody to play. I mean, I think we're going to get everybody in. Um, our goal is to, to have everybody get out there and get the cobwebs out and, and just build some confidence in terms of how we want to play. So, um, you know, win or lose, the result really for us doesn't necessarily matter. We just want to continue to, to get better and, and find ways to, to help our group uh, be a lot better going into that UNH weekend. Coach, it's uh, Jackson Wayne from Spectrum News. Uh, you, your top uh, goal scorer from last year, Grace Hiding, she graduated and off to Maine. Uh, who do you see stepping up into that? into that role this year yeah um a great question jackson i appreciate that um you know we're definitely going to miss we're definitely going to miss grace uh, i think she was a great presence for us i think she did a lot for our program and i think uh, we wish her all the best obviously at, at maine I, I hope she has a great uh, a great year there so um i think you know we're going to look for different players to, to step into that role i think we've got a couple senior forwards and carmen merlo and emily king that are going to fill a big void for us i think they're going to look to probably play every situation for us um, you know, we've got Marin Friday on the back end. I think that can add some offense from the blue line. Um, you know, and I think a lot more just in, instead of just having one person, we're looking to create some depth and have some more scoring by committee. So, um, again, just going back to, to only averaging 1.2 goals a game. I mean, we need goals from, from everywhere. So, uh, we're trying to create some depth in our lineup. I think we've got a really driven freshman group that you can feel just the attitude and the drive that they have has really helped our group. Um, just in the short short preseason we've had. So uh, really looking forward to seeing how they're implemented and, and what they can add to our lineup. Nicole, you can go ahead. Hi, Josh. Um, sort of two-parted question. One is just to ask a little bit about adding Olivia to your coaching staff and what that brings. And then um, sort of what you, maybe one or two things you've brought back from, obviously, your very busy offseason the past couple of weeks. Um, yeah. Maybe how that is going to impact how you coach um, and what you see for the team in the coming year. 
Yeah, um, great questions. Um, so I think Liv, Liv was, I mean, through the interview process, we, we had conversations with many different people. And I think it was clear to our staff that, that Liv was by far the best candidate for the position. The energy that she had, her ability to be able to connect with the women on our team was, was essential. And you could just tell that the women on our team really gravitated towards how she wanted to teach them, how she wants to coach them. And you can see it every day when she's here right now. She's been awesome. And she's just so passionate about what she does. And uh, she just, you know, she comes to the office every day with opinions on practice. She's just excited to go recruiting. And I think just some, added another element to our staff that, that we really wanted. And, uh, you know, I think for her, um, you know, obviously getting the, the cel- to, to be celebrated as, as the person that she is and, and to be uh, an African-American female in, in the world of women's hockey is something special. And I'm, I'm proud of, of just having her be on our staff, to be honest with you. So I think I understand the importance of it. And I think we're really looking forward to, to see how she blossoms as a, as a young female coach with us. So um, just taking away stuff from the summer, I mean, just being part of the USA process was awesome. Uh, really grateful for that experience. I think, you know, the biggest thing that we took away was um, just just understanding how those women are professionals and what they want and how they want feedback, how we can coach them and learning from John Robleski, um, some of the things that, that we taught the women at, at USA Hockey and bringing some of that stuff back to how we want to implement it with our group. I think some of the things that we did there I think certainly resulted in a lot of goals for for us during the tournament, and I think there's some things that we want to implement with our team um, that will continue to help us, you know, create more scoring chances um, and be a better team uh, offensively. And you know, I think one thing that he always talked about, and, and certainly something that we talk about, is just adding an element of predictability to your game. And I think for our group is just finding ways to to make our group a little bit more predictable. Find ways that that people know exactly what the puck carrier is doing, know what people away from the puck are doing make it more predictable, make it more connected so that we can have more long-term success as a group. So uh, there's a lot more takeaways. Certainly I won't, I won't keep you, but um, with all that stuff, but it was, it was a really cool experience. Uh, certainly we want to come out with the gold, uh, but it was awesome. Um, no, not right now. I think, I think that's good. I mean, we're definitely looking forward to the season. I think we've got some great leadership that's, uh, you know, going to push our team. And, and again, I think it's up to us just continue to, to earn everything and um, get out of that 12th place slot and, and prove to everyone that we can be better than that. So that's on us. Great. Coach, I think appreciate your time and wish you the best of luck this season. Awesome. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Take care. Thank you. What's going on? Not much. Coach, how you doing? Good. How are you? Good. Good. Thanks for jumping on. We're rolling right through here today, so we'll get you a couple minutes early and get things kicked off. If you would like to start just talking about, you know, the group that you have coming back this year and any incomers that are looking to impact your team as you go forward into this new season. Yeah. Um, you know, we're, we were pretty young last year. I think we had 16 players that had never practiced or played at our level. So the year of experience, I think will really help going into this season. And we only add uh, four freshmen uh, to the lineup. So we've got, you know, a pretty, pretty deep lineup, uh, 29 players. Uh, so we're hoping to bank on that experience, you know, on what it takes to play, in you know arguably the the toughest league in the country you just saw seven teams ranked in the top 12 um in the nation and uh so you know our group understands now uh, with the year under their belt what it takes to compete at this level so we're uh excited to see that uh come to fruition here hey brian uh, yeah you last year you, you won nine games which you know maybe for some, some people don't I think that's a lot, but considering you didn't play in, in you know, the pandemic year 20, 2021 and then you know, the previous year you didn't win a game, how important was it to you know, be able to you know, win some games and gain some confidence, and does this carry over into this season? Um, you know, every season is a new season, right? It's a new group, and you lose uh, you know, a senior class and bring in a new freshman class, so there's some – adjustments and getting some people on board in terms of systematically what we're doing in process and you know our programs values and, and all those types of things but yeah for sure you know it's it's always important to to get some results <clears throat> excuse me for um you know your hard work and and everything else and you know i found last year we were pretty much in every game you know uh, against some some really really good teams taking 
you know, Colgate to overtime, Harvard to overtime, getting a big win finally in, at Kiel, which had, I think, been over 10 years since we had won up there. So uh, as a young group, I mean, it's uh, it's really important uh, to, to get some results uh, for your effort. And, uh, you know, we hope to build on that, obviously, going into the season. Uh, Coach, it's Jackson from Spectrum News. Uh, what's what would you say has been the biggest challenge so far heading into this this season, which is getting off, you know, just a few days here? Um, you know, honestly, this year it's it's been a little easier just because we're allowed to start, you know, full practice uh, a week earlier than than we generally would. So, uh, you know, we have a big exhibition game uh, this Sunday against uh, Montreal. Uh, so it's good to have a, a CIS school back in, in our building. Uh, so that'll be good preparation. And then we have, you know, basically two weeks uh, and a weekend of, uh, of practice going into St. Cloud. And they, they came to our barn last year and, uh, you know, they were two competitive games, but we weren't able to win one. So, uh, we you know, we've got something to prove going up there, playing a WCHA team to, to start the year. But I think, you know, this year I feel most confident about uh, the amount of time we've been able to spend uh, with the team and the players and implementing, you know, our systematic play and uh, kind of our identity and how we want to play and what's going to give us success. So we're uh, we're excited to get going here. What are you expecting out of the exhibition game? That, that That's a good question. Uh, <laughs> you know, uh, we like I said, we've got a large roster. So I think it's a great opportunity to, um, you know, kind of get get a good feel for, you know, where people are going to fit, you know, in, in that roster. So we plan to play a, a big lineup against Montreal and and get uh, some of our younger players some experience and uh, and also, you know, give uh, some players that are battling to make our lineup an opportunity to, to show what they can do. And and I think always in an exhibition game, you know, it's it's a it's a great learning tool, you know, to, to go back and the things you've been working on as a team. Now you're in live competition. Uh, you get to come back, watch the tape, you know, make some adjustments, learn, teach. Uh, I think we really look at that exhibition game as as that. Go ahead, Nicole. Hi, Brian. I um I had asked Bell Ruzzi a similar question. I, I think um just wanted to get your take on um sort of what how you how you keep the players motivated. Like you said, you were in a lot of close games and that can get discouraging. And in such a tough league, like the the signs of growth or the the wins might not show up on the scoreboard and might be smaller steps so just kind of how you all handle that and, and what you look to to see from your team um to show that like sort of things are improving and things that you can build on and keep them motivated uh even when it might not be a win on the score sheet yeah i mean we've always been process focused here you know sometimes the outcome of a game is is not in your control you can run into a hot goalie um you know another an opposition player can have a big night um, you know, you just, you never know. So we always, you know, we measure our success based on, you know, process goals there every game, you know, we have, I think we have seven, uh, objectives that we want to hit, um, every time. And we feel if we get four to five out of those, we're giving ourselves the best chance, uh, to, to win the game. So that's kind of our motivation. I mean, our team, um, you know, really unsolicited, uh, their, their motto this year is, is win the day. So we're focused on the present and, and kind of what's in our control today. Uh, so, you know, today we're, we're going to go out and practice uh, later this evening and uh, and I expect that, you know, we're, we're going to give our best and, and get better. So, you know, I think when you're you keep your focus there, uh, the results eventually come if your process is strong. Brian, does 10th uh, in the preseason poll sound about right or you think you could have been higher? Sorry, what were, I, where were we? I didn't even know. Yeah, the poll. Uh, you guys are picked 10th, finished 10th. Yeah, yeah, I mean, we don't. We don't <laughs> I didn't look at it to be honest. Uh, okay. I, I don't. We we don't pay attention to those things. I mean, preseason, like I said, like we're worried about the things in our control, and that's practice, and you know, getting in the gym and getting better, getting our recovery, those types of things, and you know, that will play out. It's a long season, you know, and and like I said, this is the deepest league in the country. Uh, every game is is uh, is a playoff game, you know, right from right from the get go, and every point is is measurably valuable. So. Uh, so we really kind of focus there and, and don't really pay at any attention at all to polls and preseason things. Coach, how exciting is it for you and your players to have fans back this season? Yeah, that's a that's a great question. Um, really exciting. Uh, and, uh, you know, I think the first thing we want to do is reconnect with uh, 
with our parents and our families. Uh, and, and we're going to have that opportunity this weekend uh, in our exhibition game uh, to welcome all of our families back into our rink. We're going to have a barbecue, uh, you know, recognize them during the game uh, and reconnect. I mean, I haven't seen uh, some of them for for two to three years, you know, and uh, so and then it's a, it's a basically a whole new team. So them getting to know each other and uh, as well. And we consider ourselves a family at RPI and, and that's a huge part of it. So uh, we're, we're really excited. You know, we got uh, pretty decent student support last year uh, and staff support uh, that came out and cheered us on. And, um, you know, this is a hockey, <laughs> this is a hockey school. And uh, as, as we grow and get better and have success, you know, I, uh, I know that uh, we're going to have great support from the community, from on campus and, and everything else. And that's what college hockey is all about, really, you know, is, is that, that experience on the ice, playing in front of your friends, family, fans, the community. Um, and, uh, you know, that, like I said, that's what it's about. Ryan, can you just talk a little bit about the importance of having, um, a solid goaltender like Amanda back there and what it means, uh, sort of for your team to be able to build out from that, but also, um, as a smaller goaltender, she, you know, has still been successful. She, she moves really well. Can you just talk a little bit about sort of the technical aspects of her game? Yeah, I think uh, you know technically her her biggest asset is is her her hockey sense. You know she thinks the game, she anticipates really well. Uh, she knows the shooters. You know she's extremely prepared. Uh, she's she's our captain. You know for for a reason, uh, and, and that's not always easy as a goalie. <laughs> but uh, but you know she's earned it, and she's earned the respect of her teammates, and and basically how she goes about her her daily process. You know every time I walk in the rink hour before practice, she's warming up, she's doing hand-eye coordination, you know, ball work, things like that. And uh, she's a pro, you know, through and through and, and a great example for uh, her teammates. You know, I think it's her leadership, her character, her heart. I mean, she's a competitor. Uh, she's got that swagger as a goalie that she believes she can stop every puck that comes her way. Uh, and when you have that as a foundation, I think it, uh, it leads to great things as a goalie. Else have for coach. Hey, Brian, how's the little one doing? <laughs> uh, she's awesome. Actually, I just uh, I ran over here from home. My wife was uh, was teaching yoga, and I was on baby watch. So uh, <laughs> it's it's been uh, it's been unbelievable. Uh, it's been a whirlwind summer, but uh, yeah, it's been it's been great. It's been awesome. Yeah. Thanks for asking. You're welcome. Congratulations. Thank you. Well, congratulations on adding one to your incoming <laughs> class, coach. And thanks. We look forward to seeing your team hit the ice and one of the teams that starts us off this weekend. So we're looking, getting ready to get things going and good luck the rest of this year. All right. Thanks. Thank you, everybody. All right. Back here with Dartmouth head coach, Liz Keedy Norton. Coach, thank you for jumping on today. Yeah, of course. As we get into our preseason and the preseason polls and all league teams were announced today and we, you know, head towards the first weekend of non-conference play for a few of our teams you come off a busy season, you know, or busy summer on your own, but for the Dartmouth side, talk us a little bit about the off season and, you know, where this team is headed as you head into the new year. Um, yeah, for sure. Definitely an exciting summer. Um, so this season we bring in eight freshmen, which is, which is awesome. Like they'll bring compete and energy. So we're excited to have them. And for us, like going into year two and hopefully having like a few less COVID scenarios, um, my hope is that we, uh, we grow as a team and we continue to build our culture. Um, I'm really happy with the trajectory of the program for sure. And we have a new leadership group and a lot of, uh, like we just have more depth in, in every area this year, which is really, really exciting and refreshing. So I'm excited to get going. And on the league side, obviously you have a good amount of experience with the league as a, as a player and as a coach <laughs> at different stops along the way. So maybe no one better to talk about, you know, the depth and the competitiveness of this league and where it's grown from, you know, from your time as a player to now, how much this league has grown. How I mean, awesome is it yeah. Sorry, that like this league is unbelievable. I mean, every every weekend, every game is um, like a, a top notch opponent. And like there are so many super successful programs. There are so many up and coming programs. Um, it is it is a really, really tough league to play in. But um, I'm, I'm excited to be in it. I think the the challenge is awesome. And 
it shows the growth of the game and the development of women's hockey just overall, which is awesome. Um, but like to me, there's no doubt this is the best league in the country, like by far or none. And as a group that, you know, you talked about continuing to evolve and build through this league, how much of a challenge and at the same time opportunity is it to be able to go into these games every night where you're playing a top 10, top 12 opponent? <laughs> well, I always tell people to think of a challenge as an opportunity and is for us like, it will be every night will be a battle, um, but I think it will be for everyone else too. And I'm excited for when teams come into Thompson that they're going to have to work and they're going to have to work for a full 60 minutes. And um, hopefully we get a few more wins there this year. But um, in, in general, like I'm really excited about that opportunity. Like you get to play with and, with and against the best every night. And like, what's better than that? Absolutely. Nicole, do you have any questions? Sorry, I went to refill my coffee, so I'm running. I'm just <laughs> running by. No, you, um, you earned it from being on since the beginning of the call. You can take as many <laughs> coffee breaks as you need. Sorry. Um, Liz, just wanted to ask a little bit about um, sort of how with the, the change in the body contact rules, you have a, a, a lot of big players on your team. You, you They use their bodies well um, to begin with. So just curious about if that's something you guys have talked about at all or, or how you think that might affect the way that your team can play this year. Um, I hope that we play a really physical game. Uh, I would also like to play a fast game. Um, I hope that people walk out of the building describing us as relentless and a team that focuses on second effort plays and never gives up. And I, I like, I know that we're more than capable to do that, but in terms of, in terms of size, um, I like, I hope that we're tough to play against, but like, I hope our smaller kids are too. And like, I like that dirt dog mentality and people who will, will do whatever it takes to make the next play, to earn the line, to get the puck in deep, all of those things. And so my focus would be more on like size, not necessarily size, sorry, but um, speed and compete before, before size. Great. Thank you for that. Sorry. And then I just, I wanted to ask about what your, what, if you have um, any thoughts on the, the goaltending situation or knowing that you've only been there for really, they've only been there for a week. Um, if that's still up in the air and, and sort of how you see that playing out. Um, I, I have so many thoughts on the goalie situation, um, but I hope that like, I hope we have more stability there. And I think that we do. Um, we have three excellent goaltenders. We have three kids who will work really hard and no matter who's in the net, I think they'll push each other to compete, which is awesome. And we'll just elevate the play for everyone at practice. Um, and hopefully get us a few more wins or give us a chance to win every weekend, which is what I expect. Um, but in terms of what it will look like, we like our kids started class on Monday and we haven't been on the ice yet as a team. So <laughs> I know about as much as you do so far. Fair, I understand that. Do you, how do you, um, I guess maybe, how, what is the, the mentality and how do you prepare your players for sort of that later start and then knowing that when you hit the ice, half the, the league will have, um, you know, sort of a few more games under their belt and really be um, a, a little bit ahead in terms of that. Yeah. Shaking uh, off that <laughs> they, they certainly will be. And um, like on, on the one hand, it's a disadvantage, but I think there's, there's planning that can go into helping sort of close that gap. And for me, I think the biggest thing is like Dartmouth is so good at supporting our students off the ice. And we have this great program at Dartmouth Peak Performance and all the services there. I think the best thing for our kids is to make sure that the transition, like academically, especially for our freshmen, um, just new place, all of that is getting them to use those resources so that when they do come to the rank, they're at their best. And then the second piece of that is just managing what you throw at them. So like you can only learn so much. Um, our first day of practice will be will be next Monday. And then we play our exhibition against McGill on October 9th. And so that's obviously a really quick turnaround. Um, and so I think the best thing for us is to be really focused every day to make the most of our time together um our kids came in really prepared and that's helpful like that's a big emphasis for me that they're that they're fit that they're strong and they're ready to go so that part is sort of taken care of um and then just that like we have the right people in the room that are engaged so that they're paying attention they're they're soaking up things like a sponge and they're they're adapting as they learn new things um but it's a it's certainly a learning process and 
some people will catch up quicker than others. And, and that's why in the beginning of the year, there's a lot of upward and downward mobility for players within the lineup. Great. Thanks so much, Liz. You bet. And Liz, just shifting gears a little bit from the, you know, the league perspective on the international side, working with the U18 team this year, can you just tell us a little bit about that experience and, and then kind of elaborate on how much the international stage, you know, plays into the depth of this league and, you know, so much experience from our players and coaches at that level. For sure. So, so first working with the U18 team was an unbelievable, is an unbelievable experience. Um, I learned a lot. Hopefully the players did too, but you're, you're coaching with and working with some of the, the best players at that age level, which is, which is awesome. And just their ability to learn things and um, the compete level is, is unbelievable. I think the biggest thing that excites me is, how far that level of hockey has come and for the growth of women's hockey, it's, it's really promising that so many countries at that level have such excellent teams. Um, so it will be like come, come world championships time. That will be a really good tournament. It'll be really close games. And that's so different than, than say 10 years ago, which is a great reflection of, of our growth as a body. And then just in terms of our league, I think that, we have players that have played everywhere and, and have done everything. And that's, that's unbelievable. And I think what they bring back to their programs is, is so critical to the success of our league. And um, I'm excited to keep watching it grow. Awesome. Well, thank you. We're excited to watch your team hit the ice and, and watch that your program grow as well. So good luck this year and all the best. Awesome. Thanks so much. Thank you. All right, joined next by Colgate head coach Greg Fargo. Coach, obviously a very successful season for you last year and looking into this year as the preseason poll and the all-league team comes out, preseason number one and two players on the all-league selection. So coming into this year with you know everything you did last year and all the preseason accolades, is there a different pressure that comes with that success from last year and maintaining it, or do you approach it with a new slate and a fresh start? Um, yeah, great question, Nick. I, I would say that, uh, for us, um, you know, you know, a little different coming into it this year, having won the last couple of years, I think if anything, last year was a little bit of a, of a, an eye opener, uh, for us, like coming in, um, as the defending, uh, champs and, and having to kind of deal with, with having a big target on our back, um, this group, I, I guess, is a little bit different. I feel like, um, you know, it's a, it's a much more experienced group. Uh, they've played, you know, our, our leadership, our juniors and seniors especially, have played in a lot of really important games over the course of their career, and uh, they've had the opportunity to compete for championships. So I don't, I don't necessarily think that uh, it comes as any sort of uh, surprise or, or any kind of uh, added pressure for this group. It's um, – you know, in a lot of ways, I think it's right where they want to be and um, and knowing full well that, um, you know, this this slate uh, of games that we're going to play coming up, especially in the ECAC, um, they're going to be as hard of, of games as as we've ever had. And in, uh, in any given season, given the strength of our league from top to bottom. So, um, yeah, just, uh, you know, excited to continue to take ground on on what we've been building and. Um, you know, but but nonetheless, uh, you know, I think this group will be will be ready for the challenge. And just on the league side, you know, we looked at we looked at the preseason poll today and talked to a few coaches, you know, with Cornell and Harvard being six and seven in the preseason poll, but being ranked in the national top 12. You really don't see that in a lot of leagues in any sports at all across the country. What has this league evolved into and in a bit of a monster in terms of going every night and playing a top 10 team and, and how much of a challenge and opportunity is that for every group? Yeah, I think it's funny. I mean, I, you know, I've been coming on these calls for 11 years and I, I feel like every year I come on it, it's uh, you know, I keep talking about how uh, this is the best our league's ever been. And um, I feel like a little bit of a broken record, but that's the reality. I think we're all, uh, continuing to get better uh, when you look at the seven teams in the national rankings, but also the teams that 
uh, that aren't in the national rankings, they're continuing to take ground. And I think, uh, like you said, there, there's no uh, game, certainly no series in this league that um, feels like, you know, you can, you can coast into it. I think it speaks to the parity in the league uh, that's been continually getting better. And um, I think it's great for the game. Uh, overall, I think there's more better players out there today that are competing at the Division One level. Uh, and our league is certainly, um, you know, the bene benefactors of that and, and being able to, uh, you know, to get stronger over time. And so um, I think it makes for a better experience for our student athletes, um, knowing that we have to be, if we want to succeed, we have to be at our best every every night. And uh, ultimately, uh, you hope that that prepares you for a strong playoff run when the games matter at the end of the year. And hopefully, um, you know, at least one of our teams can uh, can come away on top uh, in the NCAA tournament at the end of the year. Uh, but our league certainly uh, allows us to to prepare for that and uh, and be ready for it when it comes. Nicole. Hi, Greg. I just wanted to ask a little bit about, um, I know the sort of culture and getting the players to come together and, and really form a solid group is, is important to you. And you have a lot of players with um, international experience. You um, are bringing in this freshman class, a couple of transfers. Just kind of wanted to ask about the chemistry of the team and and how you you sort of get them all on the same page heading into the season. Yeah, that's a great, a great question, Nicole. Certainly. Um, you know, that's an important part. I think, you know, one thing we talk about here is that, you know, the kind of the lifespan of a, of a team is actually really short. You know, we have, you know, 25 individuals, uh, last year's team was last year's team. And, and when you add six freshmen and a transfer, um, you know, it, it's certainly a different makeup. And so I would say a lot of our, uh, our energy early on in the season and as the season goes on, goes into, um, you know, trying to uh, kind of identify who we want to be as a team and and how we're going to go about doing that. Um, we're, we've been really fortunate, Nicole, I think, in in that, um, you know, the, as I mentioned earlier, like the leaders that we have, um, you know, really, really are the ones that are setting the culture of our team. Um, but but I think one of the things that our group has done well in the past and and, and certainly this year is, uh, make it uh, make our environment welcoming uh, for everybody um, and allowing everybody to kind of build relationships with one another. We just got back from a, a little team retreat last weekend where we went away uh, into the woods and, uh, and, and left our phones behind and just kind of spent the time, you know, get to know each other a little bit better. Um, I don't know that that, you know, there's any certain, uh, magical potion uh in order you know to to bring a team together uh, more importantly it's just the everyday interactions that we have um you know in hopes that by the end of the season or as the season goes along we've got a group that's not just playing with each other but but for each other and, and i think when you have that it uh it can make for a special and memorable year whether or not you you win at the end or not so um, that's, that's something we value a lot, is, or, or, you know, as a team is being connected. And, and I think, uh, at the very core, it, it starts, or at the foundation, it starts with, uh, you know, the relationships that we foster here. Thanks. And then I just wanted to ask you a little bit about Kalti, um, just because going into last season, you had talked about sort of the growth that she made and how different a player she was. And we really saw that bear out. And then I think, you know, again, with the the international experience and and how she's really evolved in just the, the few years that she has been with you guys in terms of um, you know, being more solid on her skates and, and her game along the boards and things like that. I just um, a wanted to ask what you're expecting from her this season and be just ask you to talk a little bit about um, sort of the evolution of her game. Yeah. Yeah, Kalti, um, Kalti's game, um, you know, continues to evolve. I think, I think what we're seeing internally here is that um, Kalti continues to just grow and mature all the time. And, and I think we see, um, you know, the benefits of that on the ice for our team. Um, 
she'll, you know, she's a, she's a junior now. She'll continue to play a bigger leadership role for us. Um, and, and, you know, a sense of responsibility to, to just do the right things every day in practice and at the rink. And, um, I don't think any of us on the staff are, are trying to put more pressure on Kalti than she feels herself. She wants to help the team win. Um, and I think the best way that she can do that is, is by continuing to, um, progress as a player and grow, um, you know, but we're certainly not looking at it with her or anyone for that matter of like, Hey, you know, she had 50 some points last year and we got to get to 60 or, you know, I think that kind of external pressure, um, doesn't help anybody. Uh, we're just trying to, trying to encourage her to keep taking strides and, and help her grow in different areas of her game. Uh, she already does so many things well. Uh, but if we can find ways to, uh, to just add layers to that, to her game. I think, I think she's going to feel good about herself as the year goes on. And uh, I, I don't like to put any limits on anybody, but, but Kalti certainly somebody that I, I think can, can be one of the best players in college hockey. If she, um, you know, if all the, the pieces come together and she's got the right mindset and, uh, and she's committed to doing that. So uh, excited to see what she can accomplish. Great. Thanks, Greg. Great, Greg. Thank you very much. And unless you have anything else to add about your group, I appreciate you taking the time and look forward to seeing you get back on the ice and compete for another title. Sounds good, Nick. Thanks a lot. I appreciate you guys coming on. Have a great day, everyone. Thank you, too. All right. All right. Back with one of our final coaches of our call today. And Clarkson finishing fifth or being chosen fifth in the preseason poll. And the first question for you, coach, that I've asked a few coaches is you look at the preseason poll and whether you take stock in it or not to be picked fifth in a preseason in your conference and then know that you're top 12 in the national pulse is, is a little bit strange for a lot of people. But in this league, it's become almost the norm. Um, you know, what what does that kind of say about this league and the depth of, of national recognition that we've gotten? Yeah, we've actually had a lot of conversations about that, uh, you know, with the coaches within the league, with uh, our team, just how strong the ECAC is going to be this year. And obviously uh, seeing the results of the preseason polls and uh, the national polls there, obviously uh, a lot of people think the same way as well. Um, you know, with uh, the recruits that we have coming into our league, with the uh, players that uh, are returning to the league and those players that are coming back from the Olympics uh, to some of these programs, obviously that's going to be a big boost for those teams right there. So um, yeah, it's going to be a grind this year. There's no question about it, but uh, it certainly will make things a lot of fun. And you talk about that grind coming into almost every weekend, you're playing a top 10 team, one game or the other. And then even the teams that are not ranked in that top 10, top 15, you know, uh, our teams that towards the end of the year last year really started to come into their own. Is that more of a challenge or an opportunity for your group to be able to know you're going to be pushed every single night? Yeah, I would, uh, I'd say it's a little bit of both to be honest with you. Um, obviously it's challenging. You got to make sure that you're prepared and ready to play each and every night and be consistent. And, you know, it's a long season, um, you know, being able to kind of, and that's where the thing, that's the thing, like the top teams, the best teams in the country are able to kind of put things together for an entire year and play with that type of consistency. So um, just trying to keep everyone focused and, and ready and prepared as best as possible uh, each and every night, obviously is going to be a challenge for everyone. Uh, but at the same time, like you said, I, I think it presents a pretty good opportunity to the, to uh, put yourself in a pretty good position um, nationally and come the end of the year when, uh, you know, all the final rankings and, and formulas and all that kind of stuff for the NCAA tournament comes out. Uh, it presents a really good opportunity for your team to put yourself in a pretty good position there. Um, so, yeah, like you said, each and every night's going to be a grind. And, uh, you know, like you said, it should be a lot of fun, but there's going to be a little a lot of stressful nights as well. No question about it. Probably more fun for us to watch than for you behind the bench some of those nights, but nonetheless, it's good for the league. Nicole, do you have any questions for coach? 
Yeah, hi Matt. I um, was curious about your goaltending situation. Obviously, three younger players. Um, I assume that you haven't made any decisions yet, but just kind of was curious what the the situation is there and how you see that shaking out. Yeah, no, I'm really actually happy with uh, the way the goaltenders have come in this year. All of them came in really prepared uh, throughout the preseason. You know, did great in our uh, testing with our strength coach. Have been great uh, on the ice and off the ice so far. I uh, really been pushing each other too, and that's what you want to see. Uh, you want to see competition within your team, and obviously at the goaltending uh, position, it's a little bit different. There's only one that can play, but uh, they've all been great with each other too. Just kind of, you know, kind of forming that goaltending bond and pushing each other, and uh, it's been fun to watch, to be honest with you. And like you said, like there's uh, some decisions that need to be made here in the next couple of weeks and throughout the season, but uh, it's a good problem to have for sure. Nicole, do you have anything else? Yeah, sorry. I just wanted to ask about um, adding Cassidy to the coaching staff and what it means or what it brings to the the your your team to be able to not only have a former player but someone so recently a former player and and with how much the game has changed and keeps evolving like having that that sort of information base and, and then being able to relate to her so what bringing Cassidy to the staff means for your team yeah that was uh you know one of the biggest reasons why I reached out to to Cass right away and and spoke to her about the position you know when I knew Brittany was uh was heading to Syracuse and that uh, obviously you're always thinking about uh, who you can get to replace them. And, you know, obviously Britt's been here for eight years, had a lot of success. We formed a pretty good uh, working relationship, but also friendship too. So uh, really tough to replace someone like that. But, um, you know, I knew Cass from her time here at Clarkson, obviously, and she was a, a leader and a captain for us. So I knew the type of, uh, you know, personality, the characteristics that she brought to the table. Um, you know, I know that she's had a little bit of coaching experience as well, which is important, but she's not that far removed from, you know, being a student athlete either. So she understands this this age group a little bit better probably than, than us um, at times. And, you know, she's be, she'll be able to bring a lot of the experience that she had while she was here at Clarkson in a number of different ways, you know, with the off ice stuff, just helping the players with, you know, the academic side of things and, and some different nuances uh, around campus and that, but then also um, from a winning pedigree, I guess uh, she was here for two national championships and understands what it takes to not only win a championship, but lead national championship teams too. So just being able to kind of bring that experience to the table and have someone like her that the, the players can go to and ask questions and bounce things off of. And, you know, she, she hasn't been here very long already. Uh, she's only been here a couple of weeks in that. And, um, you know, I'm already starting to see a lot of that, you know, with the players going to her and talking to her and asking her a lot of questions, which is, uh, again, a big reason why, uh, we wanted her on staff here, but uh, so far so good. Everything's been great, and uh, it's been nice having an alumni kind of back uh, here in a different capacity for sure. Thanks, Matt. Okay, no problem. And just shifting gears a little bit onto the international stage, there was a heavy Clarkson flavor along a lot of those rosters and, and watching the success that Team Canada had. And obviously I know that you were involved in one of the showcase camps earlier in the summer. You know, what was your experience like at that at that stage? And then also how important is it for your program and for the league to have such an international, you know, experience on that level? Yeah, it was for me, it was a great experience going to uh, the Hockey Canada camp out in Calgary. Um, was able to learn a lot like that's a big thing for me is always trying to grow as a coach, uh, even though I've been doing this a long time. I'm always looking for ways to get better. And, you know, going out there and, and being able to kind of talk to a lot of different coaches and what they do and just uh, being able to run some things by some of them is, is uh, it's extremely valuable. Um, so, but it was also nice to see a lot of uh, my former players and current players and that there as well, uh, just being able to kind of catch up with them 
Uh, being able to work with them again was uh, a really good treat. Um, you know, especially my former players and seeing how they've grown as people and players. Uh, it's really nice to kind of to be able to kind of witness that uh, firsthand, to be honest with you. But uh, as far as the league goes, when you go out to those uh, camps as well, you start seeing all the players that have gone through the ECAC. Again, I've been, you know, in this league for 16 years now. And um, you start seeing the players that you coached against, kids that you've recruited, whether they came to Clarkson or not. Um, there's quite a few players from the ECAC at these camps. And, uh, you know, I think that's why we're building such a strong league right now. Uh, you're seeing a lot of these these kids have success at that uh, international level, and and it's really helping bring more student athletes to the ECAC because of those players and the success that they've had going on to the next level. So uh, the whole experience has been great. Uh, working with Hockey Canada, obviously they got things rolling right now too. So um, you know, it's just pretty fun to be a part of. Awesome, appreciate that. And unless you have anything else to add about your group, we are all set for you today and look forward to seeing you hit the ice. Good luck. All right. Thanks. Appreciate it, guys. Thank you. All right. Have a good day. Too. All right. And Mark Bolding from Yale will be up shortly, and that will be our last one. All right, back here this time with Yale head coach Mark Bolding. Coach, thanks for jumping on today. Yeah, no problem. Uh, great to chat, and it's it's hockey time, so we're we're always excited to talk about uh, the season ahead and uh, new players. So uh, we're we're pretty fired up to to get going. Yeah, we're excited to get everybody on the ice and what looks to be a really good year for this league. And looking at the preseason poll and all league teams that came out today two players of yours on the preseason all league team in Emma sites and L Hart and number two in the preseason poll. I know a lot of coaches don't really care too much about the preseason numbers and all that, but with such success that you had last year and, and being recognized to build on it again this year, you know, what does that mean to you and your program? Well, definitely proud of the players past and present. I mean, you know, to be in a position where you, you get a little bit of early season recognition is always nice for, for those that put in the work and, um, you know, again, I feel proud for the players to have some, some moments of, uh, sunshine, um, as they get prepared and, you know, th they're all pretty wise though. They'll know that'll quickly go away when we start playing games. It, it doesn't matter too much, but, you know, a good feather in the cap and make, makes people feel, feel like it's, uh, sort of been validated. Uh, you know, if, if you have, if consistency and they've they've put in a couple of good seasons you know next thing you know you can you can be in the conversation for uh for good early thoughts so we're, we're proud of them but ready to move forward and as you talk about moving forward you know it obviously comes with talking about last year and a tremendous year that you had obviously one game short in the ecac tournament but then bounced back in the ncaa's and made a good run there with the people you have coming back and the players you have what can you pull from that experience to get over that threshold this year and, you know, into that final game of the national championship and, and win the ECACs? Yeah. Great. You know, great question to, to think about really internally. It's kind of the one I I'm sure our players ask themselves, you know, what could we have done better maybe against Colgate in the ECACs and then, you know, the big game where you're, you're actually there in the moment and you, you know, you're only one goal away from getting into an OT situation and playing for a national championship. So those thoughts will run through players mind probably for a long time. And uh, I guess for us as a group, you know, how can we play, um, you know, desperate um, overtime type hockey uh, consistently. And, you know, we were, we had a good start last season and hopefully that'll happen this year, but you know, you never know, but, just realizing that every game is so valuable and uh, how to control those those short moments that you're not in control of, whether it's a face-off location or uh, stress of being down a few players or, or what it is. So I think the overall experience of being there will certainly help and give us a, a bit of an advantage as we play teams that, um, 
you know, have been used to being there, but maybe have, haven't been there for a year or two. So everything's up in the air. You throw the deck up and the ECAC will be a battle. But I think our experience will um, will no doubt play, uh, play a, an important role into seeing how far we go this year. And you speak about the ECAC being a battle. I've talked to a few coaches this morning about the preseason polls on the national side and you know, teams five, six, and seven in our league's preseason poll are top 10, top 12 in the country. This league has become so deep and such a challenge night in and night out. Is that more of a challenge for your group or is it an opportunity to be able to take on a national opponent every single game? Yeah, you know, what you can't control are your opponents in um, in the league. And fortunately, you know, we belong to such a great, uh, deep um historic league that that gives us opportunities every weekend to play a tough opponent whether you're home or away and and that's a great advantage and um it it will prepare you it it it, it did prepare us last year and uh, i think our players are very you know even even more thrilled with their choice to be in this conference as student athletes and um we use it in recruiting no you know other leagues may as well but Proofs in the pudding. There's a lot of good. There's a lot of good hockey teams that are in this conference on, on the men, the men's and the women's side that really grind it out and have a passion for the game, and that means a lot. It means a lot to our fans, our alums, and um, you know, it, we're we're we are a deep conference, and it's going to be, it's going to be a great start, a great middle, and a great finish. I don't think there's going to be any lulls in this year. No, it's 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 you look at the schedule and there's some matchups early on that you really look forward to and they just carry all the way through to the end. And as you knew from last year, you play the same team in two overtime games and two really big elimination games and they happen to be in your conference. So you never know when the last time you'll see a league player, a league opponent is Um, speaking about your roster a little bit. Sure. Losing Maloney and goal obviously is is a big piece, but having the returners that you have, including two all league players, you know, what do you like about the group coming back? And then what does your incoming class add to that? Yeah, I think, you know, losing the players we had, we had a great leader in, in Greta Skarzynski, and that'll be tough to replace. But we had some great seniors who went out on a, on a high and uh, probably none bigger than Gianna, who was really steady in the pipes and had great numbers. So, but, you know, in every new year, you got to hand it over. We knew Pia Dukaric would be a talented goalie and we, you know, we're going to hand the torch over to her and, let her probably get the bulk of the minutes and then develop the other two goalies. And I think, uh, you know, with returners such as Harchie, such as our captain Dalton Welsh, um, you know, sites on the blue line and and now a, a new veteran Vita as a defenseman. Um, we do feel like we have depth and uh, we like to play fast and hopefully that's a way that we can continue to, to use our depth, but we've got a lot of, a lot of players and a lot of, uh, I think, kids that now, again, have some experience. Uh, they're confident in, in who they are. And they understand, I think, how to play to have success. And and that all goes back to competition. It all goes back to, you know, working together. And they've, they've quickly bought in. So, um, you know, tough to lose who we did. But I think our depth coming back will, will help us. We're, we're a deep enough team that we can play more than two lines and um you know defend well so that's going to be important for us and yeah i don't know new players coming in we like several of them i think jordan ray will have a great start karina d'antonio is a pretty pretty talented forward and uh we've got a few defensemen gracie gilkison and uh sylvia bojarski have just just a couple notables and um you know there's others that will hopefully come from the last year's first year class that will step up and everywhere in college hockey, there's that, wow, that surprise that you didn't think you're like, how did that player go from, you know, two points to, to 32 points and it happens. And that's what makes our game so much fun development, development, and then kids putting in the time and, and just figuring out how college hockey works. So uh, we all hope that our kids that maybe didn't play an impactful role, have figured it out and are elevated. And then of course, you know, we know we're going to get some great efforts out of our, our veterans and um, we're going to put a lot of stock in our older players and hopefully they'll respond. Great. Well, unless you have anything else to add about your team coach, we are, we're all set and we look forward to seeing you guys hit the ice very soon. Nice. Thanks, Nick. Appreciate it. Thank you. Have a good year. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks.